I thank you, Angela. Recording in progress. Sorry about and that. And I thank Angela and uh, Maurizio for making this possible and for the opportunity for being here. Also, let me acknowledge the Portuguese American Foundation for the Development that has supported some of the initial um, initiatives. What I've tried to do is essentially to focus on, on um, um, looking at an approach which I've been developing over the last six months after I left, left the, the government and came back to academia, and in, in particularly looking at this type of photograph which was taken five months ago in Salvador in northeastern part of, of Brazil, and per se it is very much self-explanatory. And my main question is, how can we really uh, bring to, together the ambition of these childs with, I don't know why it does not work, is blocked again. Okay. Did it work? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Uh, the main idea which I would bring to you is how can we articulate the opportunities and the ambition of these two different um, childs, particularly one in the Western um, world. And I've been particularly involved over the last decades or so in promoting the European or the renewal of the European space um, strategy, and particularly looking at ways we can really open opportunities and to make people in the center of new strategic developments. And today we are uh, having a, an enormous range of opportunities, including space to tourists, but still a growing population like this, um, like this uh, child. So let me first and foremost try to frame the problem, and then I will go through a number of potential pilot projects which we are uh, designing and I'll be very, very pleased to share with you ideas, thoughts, and actually collaborating for future research as well as as a way to open new issues for um, question. First and, and foremost, I would like to frame the issue bringing to you the hypothesis. Actually, when we look at the last Women Development Report just published about uh, three weeks ago here in, in New York City. And under this context of what they call increased uncertainties and unsettled minds, the hypothesis I will bring to you is that looking at the inclusive development of the Global South will require an improved governance of data ecologies, looking at different types of um, data in a way to, to, to combine the greening of our economies, the promotion of healthier societies, and above all, reduce inequalities. And this will bring a particularly new issue for, say, engineering systems approach in a way to promote human agencies and our collective behaviors. In other words, I will try to explore a research question, uh, which is particularly driven from this um, overall issue, how far can we design and promote advanced digital platforms, including with high resolution earth observation systems, um, targeting um, the, the greening of our economies and promoting well-being, particularly under the goal of the coming 30 years to achieve what we call, at least in, the, in Western societies, carbon neutrality or the so-called net zero economy by 2050, which is a concept particularly designed in Northern European countries, but today is a, a overall common ground for Western societies. More specifically, I would like to address this question in three specific issues, very much dealt with what I call an engineering systems approach to deal with complex urban contexts mainly under the issue of um, urban expansion in the Global South for years to come, but also in the rather complex issue which we are facing worldwide in agroforest structures and very much in mangroves, so in wetlands. And this overall research question can be framed under three, say, different but interrelated uh, um, 
questions. First, which is the new knowledge we require to foster better linkage between ecosystem services and human well-being, which is a question with which underlie in the last 15 years. Second, how to better design observation systems, and I will focus very much on this issue, particularly in a way that information can be certified to be used uh, to drive so-called carbon markets. Last but not least, how can we foster adequate institutional innovation and in particular collaborative arrangements to provide what I will call community-based participatory research and, and innovation. And certainly the issue is framed most and, and foremost on the most recent population estimates, which you may know, do show that the world population will increase until 2100, particularly in Africa. So these days, Africa population is similar to Europe and the US, which will remain constant. But in the coming 30 years, all estimates, all the best estimates, so Africa population will double, getting from essentially 1 billion to 2 billion people. Um, Latin American population will grow about 10 to 15 percent. And actually, the rise of um, um, Southeastern Asia population will become to decrease, although also um, uh, um, Central and Southern Eastern Asia will continue to grow, at least in the coming um, 30 years. Certainly, this context is particularly look at the new World Development Report, as I mentioned, just published three years ago, for the very first time, shows essentially as an impact of COVID, a decrease in the overall human development index, and therefore this is causing issues worldwide, as you all know. Actually, work then here at the Maron Institute by um, uh, Soli, Angel, and others, a few years ago, have clearly sh shown that the increase in urban population, particularly in Latin America and Sub-Saharan Africa, do not follow patterns like we are traditional considered either in Europe or North America, mainly because of the high level of, of um, um, informality, say the informality increase in all the regions except Europe and, and America. So we are particularly interested in better understanding how can we use advanced data and earth observation systems to particularly look at these issues of increased in, in, in informality as Soli and others have um, clearly pointed it out and addressing urban expansion in coming years. Let me give you one of the case studies. Um, uh, the southern eastern part of Brazil, in particular in, in Rio de Janeiro. This is the, the largest favela, the slum of Maré, um, which accounts for about 140,000 people just between the Rio de Janeiro airport and downtown in, in Rio de Janeiro. It includes ab about 16 different um, slums, overall accounting, as I mentioned, for 140,000 people. And I've been in the last months particularly working throughout a long-standing collaboration with the largest Latin American public health foundation, the Fiocruz Foundation, and a number of um, um, non-governmental organizations, particularly Redes de, de Maré, which are promoting particularly health and education issues in these very complex issues. All of us have seen this type of environments with a high level of social and economic vulnerability. And actually, last week, these are images which are very typical every day, particularly when police comes to deal with the situations very much related with drug um, business and, and actually um, a main issue is that whenever this happens um, and we, there are mass shooting problems which do affect particularly the, those people who working over there. Again, this is a situation which is very much account, but apart from that, when this happens, because all this overall place is located very much 
um, very much um, um, uh, nearby the main road to Rio de Janeiro, it completely blocks the train in a zone where lives about 11 million people. Um, actually, I was interviewing in the last couple of months and meeting a, a, for a, a workshop with the leader of um, uh, this um, uh, slam, Eliana Souza Silva. And actually, she was arguing in, in her most recent book and through a number of research work. She's someone that has, was born there, have done recently a PhD in social sciences. And the main issue she is looking is that um, uh, still civil society organizations do not understand the type of paradigms we need to change in this type of, um, of context. And she's arguing that only very creative integrated proposals can articulate, that articulate different social actors will be possible to produce innovative public policies for these fields, particularly in the, in the public, um, in the public uh, security, which do require two fundamental changes in the way we look at first the population's um, uh, imagination, and she called it, but also the idea of valuing the policy, the, the, the policy officer, but above all, um, essentially the idea that every single, every day that we struggle with this issue, we are particularly facing a critical problem, uh, which is indirectly related with um, climate change, but to affect human well-being um, at a considerable um, a extent. Um, actually. My question, which I also bring to you, how can we relate this with the work Maurizio and others have done in terms of um, 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 the, the, your work on, on mass shooting? And by reading your papers, I was particularly interested in understanding, although in a completely different context, how essentially we can look again with new data to evolve, which evolving legal changes, shooting incidents in media and in, in media coverage, and particularly focus on the way we can provide new observation systems to help facilitating um, public um, public security and the access, the basic right of access to public um, to public security. Actually. One of the main issues of this non-governmental organization that I refer to, Redes um, de Maré, is to try to avoid police to go into the, the, the slam, to avoid mass, mass, um, mass shooting. And therefore, the, the key issue is that they really know that the regulatory system under which the population lives is completely different from one we usually consider. And these do need a completely different um, paradigm to be to be sold, and so there are here clearly relations for further research work. It's interesting to note that how the the, the COVID has dramatically changed the way population believes in science in this area. And by that time, about three years ago, a consortium was formed again by these. Um, uh, non-governmental organization with Fiocruz, which you may know is the largest Latin America public health foundation, essentially to provide vaccination in this issue. And actually, they have, I don't go into details, but um, they have introduced vaccination and the throughout um, engagement process with population roughly in August 2020, which has allowed it an increase in about 26% of cases registered per week, as well as a decrease in 48% in deaths registered. So there are, um, there are stories, recent stories, uh, in association with COVID under this major initiative, which have shown a completely different change in the behavior of the, the, of the, the, the population. And the question is also, how can we get through these institutional innovations and these trust relationships which has been created to move forward now in a to address the issue of the access to public and to public safety and public conditions actually 
this was a large program and I've been working with the Fiocruz Foundation, particularly in this, um, uh, this so-called 54-5 favela. They have addressed this issue in, in 54 the different slums um, in a way that they could take, in this case, through the vaccination, scientific knowledge to all social actors, particularly strengthened network, network um, um, actions. And again, um, the idea that empowered change through what we have learned out of the uh, COVID situation in this particularly um, highly vulnerable uh, um, context is something to be explored, and I will focus this at a later uh, stage. A related but very much different problem has become very much associated with the transition to net zero, which again, um, the situation in, in, in slums, particularly in the global south, are an indirect in, impact of the current climate change. Most of us have seen this, which or this type of figure, which has been derived by International Energy Agency about one year ago, and most of Western countries have signed up this idea of in the coming 30 years, and I was particularly engaged from the Portuguese situation in this negotiation, how can we get in 30 years' time, a net zero economy, either in terms of reducing the energy consumption in buildings, above all in transportation, in industry, and in the heat um, generation. We know, nevertheless, that uh, we will not be able in the coming 30 years to decrease CO2 emissions. We may try, and I'm sure we will get some de de decrease of CO2, and therefore, it becoming of a increasing and increasing relevance, also the way to fix and sequester CO2 together with the value of biological assets, which can only be done if we foster human conditions in many of these situations which I described before in close articulation with the expansion of human, um, of human population. Overall, um, there has been an increasing attention to economic initiatives, which I believe you are very much familiar, of drying back carbon offsets, particularly in the south, in order to bring the necessary investment levels which will be able to do this issue. Actually, working with the University of Sao Paulo and Carlos Nobs of, of Advanced Studies, we know that this is essentially a woman issue and actually the way we can transform as I will show in, in a moment the process of fixing or sequester CO2 it's much rather complex than we ever expect at least five or ten years of um, uh, ten years um, uh, ago and actually again by looking at the work done here at the Marco Institute particularly by um, Kevin Cromar and, and, and the colleagues, one of key issue is to better understand the social costs of, um, of um, CO2. And now you have many different types, thousands of different types of evaluate the economic valuation of, um, uh, of CO2. And actually in this work, they have recently published um, earlier this month, they clearly show, for example, that um, uh, the, their preferred social cost for CO2 is about four times higher than the US government's current value of 50, um, 50 US dollars by, by ton of CO2. So the imprecision and the uncertainty of these calculations and the new re revisited calculations do show a clear attention in order to better understand this overall um, issue, which is particularly valid again, not only in Latin America, because we, we need large land scales to really create value out of the CO2 valuation, but more and more in Africa, um, in, in Africa zones. And Maya, I will argue that we need a new engineering systems approach to better conceive ecosystem services in association with them, uh, CO2 valuation, but we don't have enough knowledge. In particular, I will argue that we need new observation and methods 
uh, and mapping systems together with the required institutional innovations. And this requires um, a, a close articulation with the issue of urban expansion that I previously uh, described to you. But let me focus uh, in a specific issue so that you better understand the issue, and particularly uh, the most attention, the worldwide most, um, most attention is to uh, Amazonia because of its last extent. And in a recent paper, just published about nine months ago in Nature, Luciana Gatti from the Brazilian National Institute of Space Research and a number of colleagues at the University of, um, of Sao Paulo, for the very first time, they have been able to show um, plots taken vertically. Actually, this was about um, um, 590 aircraft vertical profiling measurements of, um, of uh, um, CO2. Again, I don't go into the details, but um, what I want to really specify is that for the very first time, they have shown that the Amazonia itself does not behave as a uniform CO2 sink, or even it does not behave uniformly, and therefore they have identified within Amazonia several different zones of the way carbon is sequestered, particularly in association with different patterns of um, uh, deforestation, levels of precipitation and temperature, and they have identified that above these three major variables, there is another one, which is soil, soil characteristics. And this has been used also politically to dismantle the, the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research, because I will argue to address these challenges, you can only be done this through um, high level and high precision earth observation and, and, and issues. And therefore, we really um, need to better understand the way forests are potential sources of carbon fixation, because generally the values out of Amazonia do not show the highest level of carbon sequestration as we thought five or 10 years ago. And this will depend on the way we um, look and manage data sources to foster sustainable land, uh, land management problems, and therefore this is required worldwide, uh, either through NOAA and NASA, but also in Europe to the European Space Agency, the development of um, um, uh, um, new high resolution satellite based Earth observations properly integrated with um, data handling um, um, uh, data handling um, processes. And therefore, I will argue that this is a key issue for uh, a, an improved approach of engineering um, engineering systems. The difficulty comes from the understanding of the, the carbon the, the carbon cycle, either in lands or in wetlands, which do bring a number of uncertainties to this process, and therefore it requires not only modeling, but the highest um, the highest uncertainty is coming also. In the case of wetlands, what is below surface, or in the case of um, uh, the terrestrial system, what is actually also beneath um, uh, the surface. This is because actually the most recent IPCC calculations, which were published less than uh, one year ago, shows that the capacity to fix and sequester CO2 will depend in a typical tropical forest, 50-50% say, of the capacity of forests to fix CO2, but also on the, on the soil characteristics, in particular in wetlands, which have become particularly important in the global south, um, such as all those zones where urban expansion has been particularly um, increasing, um, most of the capacity to sequester carbon is actually underneath surface and in the water um, system. And this poses a number of new questions which will require the integration of uh, advanced earth observation systems with new in-sensor, uh, in-situ um, 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 sensors. For example, a recent work done by Embrapa, the largest Brazilian 
um, Agrobusiness Association do clearly show that the capacity to sequester CO2 depends very much on the soil, on the soil um, characteristics and different uh, coffee, uh, coffee plantations do show different levels of um, carbon capacity or fixation of carbon capacity, depending not only on the profile of the plants, but also on the, on the carbon, um, on the soil, on the soil characteristics. If we move to the mangroves, particularly in Africa, the capacity is shown recently to be enormous in terms of the, the capacity to sequester carbon, but we don't have the necessary data to make an, it happen. Actually, I've been working with the South Africa Space Agency, SANSA, looking at the existing data, um, which are most and foremost vegetation index, um, which have a low, um, um, a low re resolution level of about uh, 10 meters um, land scales, but um, is not enough to provide, for instance, the necessary monitoring for mangroves like this, um, which uh, do happen in, the, in, uh, in the South Africa, like in the zone of, of um, 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 Zanzibar. Mainly because most of the existing data, and this has been done through the, the so-called European system, Sentinel, is, associ is associated and has been used for um, look at the um, vegetation conditions, um, and they may be used as input to machine learning processes for land use classification, if actually we can build a ground truth which will be able to foster a, a, an adequate engineering systems approach to this, to this um, um, process. Nevertheless, behind all these figures, there are po populations which are striving for local economic um, conditions. One of the, the projects I've been looking recently is in Guinea-Bissau, one of the strongest but more complex mangroves, um, which actually is a world heritage um, process. And um, um, essentially in a zone which is particularly influenced by high level of political corruption, uh, the so-called um, Bijagos, um, islands, um, where actually a very strong uh, ONG, Tinigena, is providing a process of capacity building, particularly through the women. And actually, they are fighting now um, also with issues, which um, in our Western way, we will particularly try to, to provide genetic modified foods to help providing food to everyone and to really fight against the lack of um, elements, but um, they strive for um, the property of those um, processes which uh, do not help the local population. And again, my, my approach is that how far can we develop an engineering systems approach which we look not only at the scientific and technical conditions, but also at the issues human population um, are uh, striving to also build the local economies they need to, uh, to survive. In other words, this issue which I'm trying to bring here, and I start with the um, constituencies of well-being, particularly in terms of personal safety and security, and I provide the example of Maré in Rio de Janeiro, one of the largest urban expansion um, in, um, in recent years with a prospect of incre increasing with the so-called ecosystems services in terms of food, fresh water provision, but above all, the regulation of climate regulation. Actually, about 15 years ago, the World um, um, uh, Resources Institute published a report identifying some of the, um, say, intensity of linkage between ecosystem services and human well-being, 
which we see particularly uh, strong in the provision and regulation of climate issues with actually all the conditions of health, basic material and, and uh, security. Uh, but the, definitely this problem has not been addressed in a, in a great way in the years to come. And the point is that how can we frame the coming 30 years, particularly when we estimate an increasing growth of the population um, in Africa and in some of these urban expansions in, uh, in uh, um, Latin America. Certainly, looking at the historical background for this, let me remember Milton Santos, a geographer, and a Brazilian geographer, which have addressed these type of questions uh, some years ago, and particularly he, he focused um, then the, what we will call the technosphere or the dimension of technology should be better combined with uh, what he called by that time psychosphere or the dimension of the desire for it, effective social and political participation. And again, this is what the most recent UNDP report comes about. How can we better combine um, adequate technical solutions with um, the social will of population at large to, to participate? And this is the main context of the projects I've been trying to develop in recent time. So to conclude this framing process, again, we know more than ever that we live in a certain times of um, unsettled um, lives that so well be, uh, was uh, reported by Duman Development Report. If we look at the three last years, the promoting of these uncertainties need to be considered in a concept of, say, human conditions, what the UNDP has called human agency. Uh, and I will argue that this can only be done if we really consider um, adequate scientific and technological truths in terms of um, um, processing and acquiring the necessary data, including the development of responsible artificial um, intelligence, which will take into consideration what has become known to be collective behaviors. Actually, in a recent paper in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, Joe Beckholman and a number of other US and European scientists will bring this idea of a crisis, a crisis discipline, collective behavior. And my point here is how can we design human-centered approaches toward, toward safer, cleaner, and more resilient cooperative um, uh, societies. And this is what I would like to share with you in terms of framing an engineering systems approach to deal with uncertainties in the global south, working certainly with local, with local um, um, partners. And I would like to bring to you a number of pilot projects, particularly in four different application areas. First and foremost, as I mentioned before, looking at low carbon bioeconomies with bringing together not only the economic valuation of biological assets, but also soil characterization and carbon mapping looking also at zones which are particularly affected by urban expansion in the south, which are essentially coastal areas and therefore development of coastal bioeconomies where most of these highly vulnerable zones do occur and will occur in the coming 30 years, certainly with innovative ways of producing, distributing and using renewables energy at a way which can bring sustainable solution. And again, the combination of these, um, of these issues with public health and social development. For making these four application areas, the, I will argue that we need also to better and adequate high resolution earth observation systems and essentially the, the way we can integrate mathematical and physical modeling with advanced visualization tools for what we have been considered to be digital twins as planning, uh, planning, uh, planning tools. Just to, to exemplify a critical issue, uh, looking at the recent years, for instance, on the tools we have by mapping and monitoring 
carbon stock with satellite observations, either from the European Space Agency or the US NASA. We have essentially been used for different technologies, uh, either the satellite aperture radar, the LIDAR, which has been used um, particularly with a quite interesting 3D capability, but not with a, a necessary time resolution, and more and more, the use of hyper and multispectral capability in optical, um, in optical sensors. Nevertheless, there is still today no a single reliable technology which will allow us to better um, um, ad and adequately measure carbon uh, uh, stocks. And this has been actually dealt by combining a number of different um, approaches. Um, and essentially, um, we are now being able to start considering inter the interactive calibration with machine learning modes in order to better articulate this different type of technology. But this is still a question mark. And actually, um, Planet Labs in, in, um, in San Francisco is trying to develop a new um, capacity. And also in Europe, there are a number of um, new um, attempts for making uh, this happen. Actually, the most recent data in Central Africa, in order to try to combine different technologies, uh, particularly based on um, LIDAR technologies with in situ sensors to carbon mapping, show a large degree of uncertainty and therefore the need to pursue in this, um, in this direction. This is interesting because, again, from an engineering systems approach, we are uh, living in, a, in the last 10 years in a changing paradigm for space system, which will continue in the years to come, started very much with the idea of um, a new area of, say, orbital space economy and in-orbit um, um, servicing, um, which will be particularly interesting in terms of the way we can build, either in Europe or the United States, in collaboration with the South, and I'm particularly referring to the South Africa uh, Space Agency to build the, the necessary innovative consortiums, bringing together public and private organizations, but also being able to, as I mentioned before, to develop the, the necessary capacity for carbon and land use mapping with necessarily expected low cost um, solutions. Actually, in order to address these issues, I've been working on, on the recent years in building up uh, the Atlantic International Research Center, which will bring together a number of different organizations with a data center together with a new um, operator, uh, Geosat, um, working with um, a Portuguese engineering center and the Atlantic International Research Center, which has now a number of uh, satellites. And we are working now on building up a new generation of satellites, which will go up to uh, a, a space resolution of four centimeters. Certainly the way until we have this type of satellites moving up, uh, and uh, again, there are many other experiences particularly in the United States. And um, um, in, in parallel with the development of high resolution um, constellations or very high resolution constellations, we need actually to figure out a number of services and the dissemination of space activities uh, in a way that we can better map what is happening, particularly in the Southern context. And that is in this context that apart from the development of new engineering solutions. I've also been looking, and again, this is a, an invitation for ideas and to share ideas with you to six different projects. One where actually I will be next week on Western Africa, particularly association with the islands of Cabo Verde. Uh, again, the work I mentioned before in uh, sustainable territories in, in, in Brazil, but also in the Brazil, uh, metropolitan area uh, in Amazonia, 
and in ecosystem restoration in northern western Brazil, as well as in development of low carbon agriculture. So now what I will do, I go very briefly to these um, case studies and then in the, in, the, in the coming days or weeks, I will be very, very pleased to work with you and to share ideas and actually develop projects in association with these preliminary ideas I've been developing with local, um, with local partners. Uh, let me start by these very first problems so that you understand the framing of uh, Western Africa, um, in particular, and in issue where a, a new cable was in, um, installed for um, communications, for secure communications purpose, particularly also uh, Euro Africa cable to address Western continental Africa uh, in combination or in articulation with advanced satellite um, uh, systems. This is the type of um, systems we are dealing with actually in Mindelo and Cabo Verde, which is a zone uh, heavily um, affected by desertification and social inequality about or uh, in beyond food, food security issues. Just to give you an example of the issues we are looking at, actually either in Cabo Verde, but we also need move to, to Ghana and, and Benin, the fishing fleet is still insufficiently developed and the, the total absence of a biodiversity um, observatory. And therefore the goal is to create a tracking systems for vessels and boys, but also to create a local group of what NOAA, in collaboration with the European Space Agency, has built in terms of marine the, the biodiversity observation network. Then looking at the main ports in this zone, particularly to create port op operations management tool and the potential transformation of these major ports in the, in the city of Mindel due to its geographic allocation in Western Africa, but also combine this issue with long history of uh, draft and the, its consequences on food security uh, above all, which will require more and more a measurable assessment of the current situation and particularly the engagement of local uh, stakeholders. Um, and fourth, but not um, um, less important, the understanding of the domestic value chains, particularly the unexplored and endogenous natural resources. Again, um, by using until now normalized difference vegetation index, we are trying to support agriculture and crop productivity, but again, most of the systems will lose the necessary accuracy for making this happen and will require an adequate interface with in situ, with in situ measurements. The fifth issue we are trying to address here is definitely, like in many other areas of the South, is to fight against high levels of poverty and social inequality in association with desertification, which will um, be at least um, the, the goal is to contribute with so-called social cartography to assist the, govern the governance of urban um, the development. Again, this has been done or in design with a number of local um, um, institutions, but particularly under the narrative uh, of transforming, uh, transforming or helping uh, in a process of 20 years a, st a structural change, which actually a well-known recent paper by Carlos Lopes um, and uh, Jorge Caras has shown how difficult it is in terms of being able to produce a long-term um, ambition, but also the necessary intersectorial and public and, and private coordination, as well as the diversification of the institutional context to make it happen, uh, particularly independent of local, um, political, and highly corrupted uh, um, system. And again, the idea that technical developments must be coupled with the local, institutional, and human context will be particularly um, critical. As you may know, there are several actions on course. One of them is the so-called AGRA, the Alliance for the Green Revolution in Africa, 
which was launched about 10 years ago through the US Ads and the Gates Foundation, operating particularly in 11 countries, but which is facing enormous difficulties because the traditional use of, say, the Green Revolution concept is being particularly associated with the increase of fertilizers and the increase of water. And therefore, the question, again, from an engineering systems point of view, is how can we move forward making use and better use of uh, detailed earth observation systems combined with the development of local um, uh, economies. Actually, when we go back to an understanding of the African history, Joseph Kizerbo from Bruna um, Fassi is clearly shown the need we can create um, the scaling up of science and technology and to better reconstruct the identity, the, the, the identity of most of these African people. The very same argument almost 50 years ago has just been published very recently, a few months ago, by James Poké in a, in a book, Horizons, which is he, he clearly understand or try to, to, to recall for a revisited approach to work in the global south and in particular with Africa populations in a way that we can engage them in the development of, um, um, of the, their own um, populations in local economies. Certainly, this is a long-term process um, which we would like to be combined and to share ideas with you. The second case, which I've been looking at, again, is um, in Brazil, particularly working with the Fiocruz Foundation, um, at the health um, data at national level, and then combined at different regions, northeast, southeast, but also again in the in the big slums of Rio of Rio de, de Janeiro. The difficulty in um, arranging and processing data um, at the national level is enormous because of the complex situation of different. Um, administrative data, and particularly through the Fiocruz Foundation, we are using more and more available administrative data of the entire population because they are unique data sets. Um, I don't go into details on their data platform, but essentially they have been able to develop for the very first time in the last few years a 100 million Brazilian cohort of the population, particularly in terms of um, factors associated with um, uh, birth rates, which can now be used for uh, data, uh, data um, analysis. And therefore, the ultimate goal is to work with them in the evolution of um, the existing biomedical resources to a new generation of data, which will include new biomedical resources, their environmental platforms, but also links new health and healthcare care to the different cohorts they, uh, they, do, uh, they do, do, do have. Again, this has been implemented through um, a, a consortium of different institutions based on the Fiocruz Foundation, but engaging several non-governmental organizations and uh, the design of this consortium together with putting together these projects is still in the, in the initial uh, stage, which engage certainly data acquisition processes and dissemination, uh, like the, the ones, the engagement of local uh, populations and a process of risk and, um, communication uh, actually with the experience obtained through the COVID um, um, period. Again, the need to expand this to the overall issue of public health has been particularly critical because of the idea that these populations construct their own regulatory mechanisms in, in, because of the absence of regulatory power of the, the state. And therefore, the idea that um, the need to co-design and implement alternative security initiatives based on, on the, a strong participatory process and the people's engagement will be critical if adequately combined with um, um, local 
local um, observations. So these projects, which is being designed, has become very much associated with different levels of data in integration from data at a national level to data at a specific uh, global level. And again, I raise this here because by reading some of your papers, actually, um, Maurizio and others work on high resolution agent based modeling of COVID 19 show me that we can actually understand some of this issue if we, if we can actually better understand the, the way this data is, is processed. But also, when I look at Kevin Cromar data, particularly on the models of climate change and the this, this, this systematic they, they review they did with meta-analysis, and particularly the need for accounting for socioeconomic trajectories and adaptation factors, we are estimating health, uh, health damage. And therefore, again, I bring these issues in, in also in association with the work you have been currently developed, uh, either in CUSP or in, um, or in um, um, Marron Institute. Let me move to uh, a, a related but different project in the Rio de Janeiro metropolitan area which I've been engaged in very recently with the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, uh, looking at the big so-called Guanabara Bay, the largest world bay located in the Rio de Janeiro, one of the highest polluted, but also highly controversial um, um, zone, where lives about 12 million um, people uh, around the city of um, um, Rio de Janeiro. I don't go into details. Certainly, this is a, a, the largest, most populated zone in Brazil, with essentially, as I mentioned, 12, but about 10 to 13.5 million people. And most of us have seen this type of figures. It is interesting to note that still, after 20 years of development, there is still not a, a water management system working for this overall um, zone. Um, and actually, a new consortium has been put to, together, managed by the Federal University of um, Rio de Janeiro, to look at the overall issues of cleaning up this bay, but, but particularly to develop a, um, a water management system. When we look at the, the last 100 years, um, this system has evolved, but was never operated. Actually, 10 years ago, the, uh, the, 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 largest, um, the largest water management facility uh, in Latin America, this one year, has developed. It is not working properly, and therefore what is called the Gandu system. Uh, and now the University Federal of Rio de Janeiro, together with the consortium I mentioned, is trying to design an engineering systems approach to make this, um, this happen, which again should include the development of coastal bioeconomies to deal with um, critical issues of um, waste in all the, the zones, but essentially making use of sophisticated the, the digital modeling um, and the building up of a digital twin as a planning tool for this, um, um, for this zone. We have been trying to work with them with um, uh, data analysis from different images, but certainly the design of this process is a complex issue, which again, I would like to invite you to enter into this overall uh, discussion, how to design in the coming 10 years this, um, this, um, this process. Coming up to my fourth case in Amazonia, uh, the work you may know is particularly critical to the process of deforestation. This shows the Brazil CO2 um, emissions um, um, from the different sources. The reds are the industrial processes, the blue are the livestock, which is in Brazil is particularly important because it's the world exporter of, um, of um, meat. But amazing so far, actually when we compare with the Western 
and northern world, either in Europe or in the United States, is that the, uh, the, um, the process which is most affecting CO2 emissions in Brazil is through land use uh, changes and management. And therefore, again, the world relevance of working in the so-called Brazil biomas under which Amazonia is the largest one, because actually the impact, the impact due to the large landscapes we are talking about, the impact of land use management is enormous in this, in this, in this process. And therefore, over the last few months, I've been working particularly with the Federation of, say, funding agencies in Brazil, so-called CONFAP, uh, particularly um, with the funding from the Sao Paulo uh, Foundation, FAPESP, to work not only in Amazonia, but also in the other five main um, biomas. And I will show just the project in Amazonia, as it is now dealt here, as well as one project in probably the most difficult area which is in, in the northeastern part of, um, of Brazil. Again, there are several other actions um, in due course. The most important is through a network of American foundations called CLUA, Climate and Land Use Alliance, which is led by the Four Foundation. Uh, and, and actually, the activities, which also here in the Wagner School, Salo Kolovsky has shown, is not only a question of deforestation, but also a complete absence of the development of um, a local bioeconomy um, structure. Actually, I, I've been discussing this a lot with, uh, with Salo, and he's publishing most of the work to show how we should or they should look carefully, not only as the process of the frustration, but the development of economic incentives for the local economy. For instance, looking at um, uh, issues like, the, like the, the development, the development of, um, um, of the um, caju nets, which in Brazil are completely uh, out of the, the local economy. And therefore, this is a combination certainly of deforestation with the development of the, the, the necessary local economies. Again, do requiring an adequate management of all the data which is, um, um, which is available. In the meantime, a number of projects have been developed in Amazonia. And we have been working essentially um, with um, the so-called Amazon Plus 10, which brings together 10 different states with the Sao Paulo states, essentially to develop a strategy uh, to support the standing of forests in Amazonia, but essentially looking, making use of remote sensing to land those um, chances and certainly to understand the dynamic of the, the bio um, economy. Uh, the type of projects and initiatives involve first and foremost, the development of data centers and natural products library, um, essentially through digital repositories by uh, integrating a number of different institutions which are fragmented apart uh, and do, do require a clear um, support for the, the design of a system which will be able to include um, the um, necessary data, but also the digital repositories for all of the products which can be um, exploited in a sustainable way out of um, Amazonia and very much in association with the development of advanced earth observation and applications um, in close collaboration with the National Institute of Space Research and um, um, local um, non-governmental um, um, associations. Last but not least, let me explore these projects we have been putting together in the last two months in the Acre, which is the most wet western zone uh, below the Amazonia, and is the zone most affected by the, the deforestation. If we look at Amazonia, there is a so-called 
arc of deforestation just south of Amazonia. And actually, this is the zone where, um, um, where most of that process is, is happening. And therefore, a collaboratory is putting together to help ecosystems re re restoration in this, um, um, in the, this um, zone. Just for you to understand, this is a ongoing um, path over the last, say, 15 years through a project of uh, making use of the mapping of carbon stock. We have been able, essentially, to understand how the different pressures in the system do evolve. But again, overall, this will require the installation of an overall complex data um, system, uh, which will bring data from the different from the different areas, not only the um, standing um, um, forests, but also the sustainable land use management and the few zones of protected forests, together with the development of the adequate processes of of the valuation of the different assets. Again, turning these as public data in a way that, that we can really engage the, the local population is probably one of the challenge this project is addressing, bringing together a large set of different, um, of different institutions. I've been collaborating first and foremost with Canopy, which is one non-governmental organization working particularly with the Federal University of Vsosa and the, say, Senai, which is the, the professional and industrial engineering centers in Brazil, and certainly with the largest Brazilian agribusiness um, uh, institution, Enbrapa. Managing this consortium in order to foster the process of ecosystem restoration has become essentially an issue of data management and data in advanced data, data um, processing. I don't want to go further. Oh, time is, um, is moving to the last case, which is essentially on low carbon agriculture and livestock also in, in Brazil. Um, but um, I can show this again. The overall idea is to change the current situation in um, Eastern Brazil to the, the potential use of um, um, a system which can increase carbon stock and actually keep, keep going on the livestock um, um, production. Again, this involves, again, Embrapa and a number of different situations um, with a large extension. So to help concluding, my idea is to invite you to contribute to ideas for a number of projects in the Global South, essentially by looking at um, people conditions, and by people I mean the right to security and healthy conditions, but certainly ensuring um, the necessary management of data for sustainable land use management and soil monitoring together with carbon sequestration issues uh, in a way that we need not to fix the limits to grow, but on the, on, on the other end, to do the, the necessary local bioeconomies. And this has become particularly important in coastal areas in association with large urban um, expansions. And last but not least, to build the necessary partnerships with local partners to make this, um, this happen. Certainly, these processes do not happen overnight. Actually, the University of um, California has just published um, a book by a well-known Brazilian economist, Celso Furtado, where he argues for the underlying social projects and the combination of new technical um, solutions. Uh, but particularly, uh, I've been uh, trying to look in one sense, how can we combine engineering systems approach with the so-called capabilities approach by uh, um, Martin Nussman, but more and more also how to understand these large and complex consortiums in terms of 
building the necessary human and physical infrastructures, uh, the structure of incentives and the institutional innovations in a way that we can look at four different fundamentals to promote systems linkage and collaborative arrangements in terms of the densification of the territory with the development of public and public goods, diversification of the research and innovation landscape, the understanding of the multidirectional knowledge flows between demand and, and supply, and the capacity to mobilize research and innovation agendas uh, in this complex institutional context of the, the South. Understanding above all that we need to overcome challenges which are different from those actually in the North and in the Western uh, societies. Most of them, in my understanding, related very much which I will call the arrogance of disciplinary knowledge, which in the South is becoming particularly critical, but more and more with the traditional regulatory regimes and the need to better understand technology adoption in this type of, um, uh, of um, 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 systems. So my goal was essentially to discuss opportunities for new research in what I consider to be a, an engineering systems approach bringing together policy and human agency, but in a way that we can viewing those systems and products in their broad human, social, cultural, and economic, um, and economic um, um, context. Thank you very much. Forty-five minutes, it's too much, I'm sorry. <laughs> Any questions? I'm still here for a couple of days and weeks, so we can have a put a discussion um, in the coming, um, if you now or later on. But please. Um, uh, John George, John Meredith, too. So um, the agencies, the, the national and intergovernmental uh, you know, the geospatial agencies that uh, that develop and launch and operate the uh, uh, your observation satellites. Uh, to what extent are they purpose driven in this perspective? I mean, how much how much input is there from people like you who are interested in these terrestrial issues, um, or do the the engineers, uh, the spatial uh, agencies, they just uh, build the technology to observe what they can and then make the data available to you and maybe it aligns with your needs or not. You are totally correct. That is the, 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 big, um, the, the big challenge. Um, actually, not only in Europe, but the United States, and particularly because when we look, for instance, at space systems, they have been very much developed in a supply-driven um, process. And um, uh, actually, the projects I mentioned to you have been done in close articulation with the European Space Agency, but they are essentially interested in, in providing data and that they don't have the capabilities enough to understand the, a demand-driven or a user-driven issue. That is the reason why I've been looking at collaboratory or collaborative arrangements in order to combine the supply-driven process with the user and the demand process, but per se, is a, is a complex issue how to deal how to deal with these um, um, with these arrangements. Certainly, when one goes into detail in Earth observation systems, again like here or in, in Europe, um, the data that you have access is essentially low resolution data. Here you can provide high resolution through MaxAir or for military purposes. In, in Europe, you have Airbus monopoly. So this brings also a, a very interesting but rather complex issue, which is not overcome overnight. It will take time, which actually in the West was very much launched by Planet Labs in, in California by providing small satellites, which do provide much higher resolution data. And that is the reason why between Portugal and Spain, we built this new operator, Geosat, now building up with moving from two to about eight different satellites to provide 
these uh, new data. But to tell you the truth, I'm trying to set up a team to design these new satellites. This will take time. And this data is very sensitive. That is the reason why the current, um, three years ago, the current Brazilian government simply destroyed the, the Brazilian National Institute for Space Research because the data that one can provide is, is rather sensitive. Certainly, there is an increasing concern and in, in attention either in Europe or, or here in the United States for this type of issues, particularly to look at problems like Amazon. So I believe we need more and more to look carefully at these, these systems. The type of projects I presented here, they are in a very initial stage, except the one in, in Cabo Verde, and they have been particularly or they are in the process to become funded to the European Commission through the new development funds to work with the Global South. And uh, definitely more than looking only at the funding idea, what I'm looking here is to frame the problem in an adequate way. And we know that um, even if you have a lot of funding, a lot of institutional context, you need to frame the, 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 the problems in an adequate way, looking by which are the, the critical demand conditions and involve the local populations. So apart from the overall complexity of the financial, political and institutional context, I believe there is also here content for new research in the framing and in the understanding of this type of, uh, of issues, basing on the, the technical capacity that, that, that we have. And although I'm a bit a great supporter of space systems, we also need to understand the limitations of space systems and Earth observation systems. Uh, that is the reason why I bring here the, the issue that if we really want, for example, to address the question of CO2 sequestration, we need also to have data below the surface. <laughs> it is not only with data, because all the attempts to look at earth observations for carbon sequestration did fail until now because of the, the lack of other type of data. So this is always be a process of data integration and uh, sensor fusion, but more and more of combining different types of data by understanding the local specific context in each case. So the way to frame these issues are still along in my understanding, intellectual narrative, how to adequately frame this type of problems and plan an intervention which should be gradual and stepwise. So and speaking about a 30 years time frame, and certainly in projects that can never be implemented before or shorter than five to 10 years time frame. Maurizio. So for example, for a COVID project, what type of data do you have? So which granularity, like how does that data set look like? Is a person data. I don't have the data, but we, we can speak with um, the, the people in the FIO Cruz Foundation. They have uh, individual data. For each person, they know at least the, the, the identification of the person, the number of um, times they have had COVID, and, and probably the, the health records of some of these people. I, I assume of the most of, of them. They, they know where they know. Yeah, I, I'm sure that they know. You can I believe so. Compare with the work you have done in La Rochelle, yes. uh, how, which type of data did you use for we your analysis? We used the census data. The census data. Yeah, well, Statistical data. data. So that uh, manually we can see how many people live in a building. And then we have mobility data. So, but having the public available, it was just a project model. With public available data. Yes. Again, 
But if you look at a, a favela or a slum, the level of in, in, informal construction and informality is total. Yeah, exactly. So that data does not exist. So either you use really high resolution earth observation data because there is no legal um, uh, issues here. And, and that what also brings, uh, brings this problem to a level of complexity, which is very uh, interesting to, to try to address with what I will call automatic data acquisition systems, but not with traditional statistical data, which does not exist. But in the absence of such uh, formal data, data, for example, of, let's say, cell phones, uh, really per movements, the latency, and all of this uh, people data. That is a good point. Uh, to my knowledge, it has not been tried. To my knowledge, has not been tried, but it can certainly be um, um, designed in that regard. Uh, my understanding is that the COVID situation in these favelas particularly changed the context under which a big public health foundation like Fiocruz penetrate into, because before COVID, they were not able to penetrate there. With COVID, because of the actions they have done through vaccination, they have completely built a new network and trust relationship with the local populations, which have very much changed their the context. Actually, I spent in early July a couple of days in this favela, what, lo looking what what they are they are doing uh, with the local non-governmental organization and um, the changing behavior population in general do face because the, the understanding that they have of the, the, the large decrease in, in that association with the, the, the process of vaccination they have implemented. So the argument in some ways that we live a new situation because of the, 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 the reaction to COVID to explore um, the use of um, new um, the technical and socio-technical systems to, to work in these zones, which need to be attempted. And again, I, I frame this because I am very much in the process to work with them designing the system. And I will be pleased actually to bring them here and to work with you in designing this, uh, this data system. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, you are totally right. Um, in in Brazil, uh, if you as you mentioned, I've tried to speak about in terms of states. So most of the design of these pilot projects that I report here, they are done at the state level with local agencies and, and local NGOs to be a way to be a way of the world. Exactly, exactly. No, you, you are totally right. But on the other way, if you, if you look at the traditional political regimes, you are facing highly corrupted situations with an high instability. Um, that happens in, in many other societies, also in Europe. But for instance, the example I show you in Guinea, in the last uh, three years, they have nine different governments and uh, with a different uh, situation. So we are essentially trying to work with a local NGO, which addresses local population issues. Is not the, the best solution, but also uh, if you go in a poor top-down uh, political situation, this is not... Uh, yeah. So 
privilege of making music to support the society that what kind of things are against it. I totally agree with you, but this is a local issue and makes part of the design and of the framing of the, the problem in each different in each different location. Actually, within that context, to provide an international, say, flavor of or institutional context may help. For instance, in the Western Africa project in Cabo Verde, we are particularly working with Cabo Verde, Ghana, Benin, in order to have more than one country so that we uh, also bring a layer which goes um, uh, above each individual um, um, situation. Um, and that was the rationale about five years ago to build this Athletic International Research Center, the Air Center, to go above each political issue. Because at an international cooperation level, we may have a better reliability to do local action. Uh, I mention here two of those practices, actually very much associated with North American private foundations in the USA, the Agra in Africa, which are having problems and actually have been recognized very much because of other technical issues associated with the, um, the increases of fertilizers and so on, but also in Amazonia, the so-called Klua the Climate Land Use Alliance, which is particularly uh, managed by the, the, the four foundations. So that there are some, I, I'm not sure if it is the best practices, but they are some practices one over the last 10 years that we need to, to look, and all of them, all of them, particularly to the American foundations engaged here, have tried to move beyond local governments in, in order to avoid um, institutional corruption uh, processes. In Brazil, as you tried to mention, I essentially focus on two institutions, Fiocruz, because although it is a public health institution, it has a, a popular reliability and is a credible institution um, because it's far most independent of um, public or uh, public political issues, and the Embrapa in the agro-business sector. So they are, namely in Brazil, institutions which have become strong enough to be able to develop their own, their own strategies to penetrate in this um, um, type of vulnerable territories. But again, the point that you are raised makes part of this problem, makes part of the, the, the problem. That is why it's so, say, intellectually interesting, but it's so complex to implement solutions. Um, nevertheless, we cannot, in my understanding, attempt to look at these problems as the way we do here or in Europe, say, in our own societies. This needs to look from the, the local issue and have a completely different framing of the, 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 the issue. Certainly, being an engineer, and being here in an engineering school and in two engineering related centers, I try to understand that an engineering systems approach in a full understanding of a complex systems approach is the correct way to look if we adequately set the human condition at the, the center of the decision. Thank you so much. Certainly, I'd be very pleased to work and to discuss details. Today was just to have a, a clear uh, view of some of the, the projects I'm trying to be uh, interested in looking intellectually into doing research here. Thank you very much. <laughs>